So here we are talking about Dalton's law of partial pressure, which is sort of some consequences of gas law theory that we've already talked about. Sort of a little twist on what we've already talked about. So let us consider a sample of gas. Um, just say it's an air sample. So here is my sort of sample of gas, and it's got 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, which is pretty much natural air. And if we wanted to talk about the pressure of nitrogen and oxygen and argon, remember our definition of pressure was sort of defined by the force of the molecules banging into the side of the container. So if I were just to consider the number of collisions with the side of the wall that are nitrogen molecules for every 100 collisions of any gas molecules, it's fair to say that 78 of those 100 will be nitrogen molecules. So that means that roughly 78% of all of the pressure comes from the nitrogen. And 21% comes from the oxygen and 1% comes from the argon. So what that allows us to do, the conclusion that we can actually make, is that the total pressure is simply the summation of the individual partial pressures of each of the species because I've got the pressure coming from the oxygen, and the pressure coming from the nitrogen, the pressure coming from the argon, and they're all banging into the wall at some different frequency, and they have their own unique pressure. Since all the mo gas molecules in this box have, by definition, the same temperature and the same volume, because it's a sample of gas, and so all the gas gets to run around in the entire volume, and they're all the same temperature, because if they weren't the same temperature, they would quickly, you know, the hot thing would dump in and do the cold thing. So this is Dalton's law of partial pressures, just simply that the total pressure of all the gases is equal to the sum total of the individual pressures, which might not think is very exciting, but it'll become important in a moment. So mole fraction is a way of defining concentrations of gas samples. So if I have a sample of gas that contains oxygen and nitrogen and argon, say in this previous slide, Instead of talking about percentages, normally what we'll do is we talk about mass or mole fraction. So mole fraction is simply defined as the number, so mole fraction of component A, and it looks like an X, but it's really a chi. So mole fraction of component A is the number of moles of component A divided by the total number of moles of all the gas in my system. And of course, mole fraction has to be between 0 and 1, because, for example, the mole fraction of pink flamingos in a sample of pure oxygen is zero, because the moles of pink flamingo is zero, and total moles is whatever the total moles is. And the mole fraction has to be less than one, because if it's a pure sample of just, say, oxygen, the moles of oxygen and the total number of moles are the same. So the value of our mole fraction must be between zero and one. So with a little bit of math, we can actually learn a little bit more and sort of take our definition of mole fraction and tie it with Dalton's law of partial pressures, turn it into something a little bit more useful. So the mole fraction of component 1, again, is the number of moles of component 1 divided by the total number of moles. So n1 divided by n total. And if we use the ideal gas law, we know that the number of moles of component 1 is the pressure of component 1 times the volume of component 1 divided by r divided by t of component 1. The total number of moles is equal to the total pressure times the total volume divided by r divided by the total, you know, the temperature of the total thing. Well, since all the gases have the same volume, because they're in the same sample, and they have the same temperature, because they're in the same sample, these corrections sort of cancel each other out, and so the mole fraction of component 1 is actually equal to the pressure of component 1 divided by the total pressure. And so if we rewrite that, um, we sort of turn it into a, a more useful format, which simply says the pressure of component 1 is equal to the total pressure times the mole fraction of component 1. That's all it is. So one of the simplest questions we can ask is something like this. So here we have a sample of gas, a total pressure of 1.5 bar. It contains a certain mass of nitrogen, a certain mass of oxygen, a certain mass of hydrogen. What is the pressure of the O2 gas? Well, you might think, oh, OK, I'm being asked for a pressure, and I'm given masses. I have to use the ideal gas law. But notice that. I give you absolutely no information about the temperature or the volume, because it doesn't matter. So we simply have to figure out, oh, OK, so I have mole fraction. I, I'm looking for the pressure of a certain component. 
and I know what the total pressure is, so I just need to know what the mole fraction of that component is. So I'm looking for the pressure of oxygen, so if I know the mole fraction of oxygen and the total pressure, I know the total pressure, I can figure that out. So to figure out the mole fraction, I have to figure out the moles of each. So I calculate the moles of each one of the components, so grams of nitrogen into moles, 20 grams of nitrogen, convert that into moles, 10 grams of oxygen, convert that into moles, 1 gram of hydrogen, convert that into moles. So that will be my denominator, total number of moles. And then to calculate the mole fraction of oxygen, I just take the number of moles of oxygen, which I just have, and divide it by the total number of moles. Multiply that by the total pressure, which is 1.5 bar, which will give me the partial pressure of oxygen. Now, for that, just with the plan, you should be able to do the calculation if you'd like. I can tell you right now that the answer is 0 0.308 bar. 0 0.308 bar. But I'm not going to go through and show you how to do it because this is relatively straightforward and you should be able to do it. Good luck.